So some really interesting news regarding Impact Wrestling this week and the ratings heading into Rebellion in a couple of weeks, but most importantly, the ratings and the viewership for Kenny Omega, the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega's return to Impact Wrestling. And Impact Wrestling garnered the lowest audience of 2021 so far, featuring, as I mentioned, the return of the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega. So certainly really interesting news this. Now... Tuesday's taped episode of Impact Wrestling on Access TV featuring the return of the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega with Eddie Edwards and Carl Anderson in the main event drew 116,000 live viewers on Access TV. This is according to Show Buzz Daily. The show drew a 0.04 rating in the key 18 to 49 demographic. This week's Impact ranked 146 on the cable top 150 for the key demographic and ranked 135th for the night on cable in viewership. Uh, the audience is significantly down from last week's post-sacrifice episode, which drew 146,000 live viewers on Access TV, although it stayed even in the key demographic with a 0.04 rating. Last week's episode ranked 135th for on the cable top 150 and 135th for the night in viewership. Now, Impact drew its lowest viewership of the year. The last first run Impact to do this bad was the November 3rd show, which drew 116,000 live viewers on Access TV. Before that, the September 8th show drew 78,000 viewers, which was head to head with NXT, of course. The December 29th show did draw 103,000, but that was the best of 2020 episode of Impact. This week's Impact viewership is down 20.6% from last week, while the 18 to 49 demographic is even from last week too. This week's Impact viewership was also down 32.6% from the same week in 2020. That is always significant to look at as well. Uh, and then we can also go into other shows that were airing during that period of time on Tuesday night. So it's really surprising. I, I, and I think if, if I was an Impact Wrestling official, which obviously I'm not, but if I was an Impact Wrestling official, I was an Impact Wrestling executive, if I was Don Callis, Scott Nordholm, uh, Scott uh, Demore, rather, Ed Nordholm, I would, I would look at this and be incredibly surprised. Incredibly surprised. You would think uh, Kenny Omega's return to the program and Ken, Kenny Omega's actually first appearance on Impact Wrestling inside of the Impact Zone, inside of an Impact Wrestling ring. You would have thought it would have delivered a, a, a strong rating, a, a strong viewership rather, and that didn't happen. I think what is interesting, and I don't mean to sort of gloss over what is not a great number at all for Impact Wrestling, I think what is interesting there is that in the key demographic, it's the same. And I, and I, and I think that's really interesting because essentially the older audience here has decided not to tune in this week, which is so bizarre because if you look at pro wrestling, you would tend to find that arguably the most loyal audience is the older audience. We've seen that with WWE and we've seen that with NXT in particular. The only demographic that NXT beats AEW Dynamite every single week is that older audience, uh, is that 50 plus demographic. And what we've seen this week of Impact is that that older audience, because the 18 to 49 demographic is the same as the last two, three weeks that stay pretty even, the older audience, for whatever reason, has decided not to tune into Impact Wrestling. And that's arguably the most loyal audience. Now, in the grand scheme of things, because I don't want to seem like this is a double standard or hypocritical or anything like that, um, when we talk about AEW, because even when NXT on the rare occasion gets more viewers than AEW Dynamite, AEW Dynamite still appears higher than them in, than in the in the cable top 150 because they have the better rating. They have the better rating with the younger audience. So I'm sure a positive slant on this could be that, well, look, we've still got a younger audience. We've still got a young audience. That's what television networks care about. That's what advertisers care about so it's not the end of the world it's not the end of the world but i think impact wrestling would be looking at this saying look we're going into i know slam anniversary and bound for glory traditionally are impact wrestling's biggest shows of the year but in terms of historically in terms of you know history in terms of a title versus title match in terms of arguably the biggest match that impact wrestling can do right now and certainly the biggest match in impact wrestling's recent history in the last what, five years or so we're heading into the biggest pay-per-view that Impact Wrestling have done for a significantly long time and for an unexplained reason, frankly, the viewership has just dipped completely. Now, I know the detractors of the AEW and Impact Wrestling relationship will say, look, where's the benefit now? Where's the benefit? And I've seen a, a, a bit of discussion on social media over the course of the last sort of 12, 18 hours or so since this news came out of them saying, actually, maybe the Impact Wrestling fans, the loyal Impact Wrestling fans, they're starting to get turned off to the AEW influence on the show. 
And that's kind of something I hadn't thought about before. That's something I hadn't really considered before. I don't know if I truly subscribe to that theory, if I'm gonna be honest, but I know there is a portion of people and when you are talking about a, a very small viewership base like Impact Wrestling has, I mean, we're talking around 200,000, less than 200,000 viewers that tune in every single week on Access TV. You're looking at um, potentially some real loyal Impact Wrestling viewers that don't like the AEW influence on the show, so they stop watching. But also the AEW audience isn't necessarily coming over to Impact Wrestling, which leaves this void of viewership, which has led to the drop in viewership this week. Now, I always say this when it comes to ratings that obviously you can't just take one show. So we'll have to see if this is next week, if it comes to a similar number again and it's not back up to sort of the average of 140, 150, 160,000, then something's going wrong here. I think if I was Impact Wrestling, if I was to learn anything out of this, I would say, yes, we advertised Kenny Omega ahead of time. We said that Kenny Omega is going to be on the show. But the audience, the wider audience, had been conditioned to think that Kenny Omega appearing on Impact Wrestling means he's going to be in a backstage segment, means it's going to be taped ahead of time, means it's going to be he's going to be on his tour bus, they're going to try and pretend that he's in the impact zone and all that kind of stuff. I think if they'd have framed this as not only is Kenny Omega going to be returning to Impact Wrestling on Tuesday, but he's also going to be in the Impact Zone. He's going to be in the Impact Wrestling ring for the first time on Access TV. I think we would have seen a much different result in terms of the viewership. I don't think it was promoted correctly. Yes, they promoted it ahead of time, which I'm an advocate for, especially in the case of Impact Wrestling, because they need they need the viewership. I think they could have promoted it better because they've said before, oh, Kenny Omega's returning to Impact Wrestling or Kenny Omega's going to be appearing on Impact Wrestling this week. And we've seen that at this point. We've seen that at this point. What we hadn't seen going into Tuesday was Kenny Omega on Access TV in an Impact Wrestling ring. We hadn't seen that. We'd only seen Kenny Omega inside of the Impact Zone, inside of an Impact Wrestling ring at Hard to Kill. That was on pay-per-view. So if you're a regular viewer on Access TV, you haven't seen Kenny Omega inside of an Impact Wrestling ring before. And I think if they'd advertised that ahead of time, and I think that just comes down to marketing. That comes down to marketing, that comes down to promotion, and maybe the promotion, well, not, no, maybe, obviously, they got the promotion wrong because of the low viewership number this week. Now, as I mentioned, the silver lining there will be that the key 18 to 49 demographic held even, so they can say they've still got a young audience, but I think there will be some concern going into Rebellion in a couple of weeks' time. But we'll have to see what happens uh, over the course of the next few weeks. And to be honest... Again, I don't want to see uh, be a massive hypocrite because I say this all the time when it comes to television ratings, especially in the modern era of professional wrestling, but especially now in 2021, you can't live and die by the ratings and the viewership numbers. You can't. Um, do they have a point to play? Absolutely. I, do, I really don't agree with people going, well, they don't matter anymore. Of course they matter. They will always matter. As long as a program is broadcast on television, television ratings, television viewership numbers will always matter because they matter to the television networks and they matter to the advertisers. So they always will matter because television networks want to have the highest viewed or the highest rated show on television. Advertisers want to advertise their product, their brand, their service, whatever, on shows that have high viewership or a high rating in the demographic that they're looking in. You know, and most of the time that's the 18 to 49 key demographic. That's what advertisers care about. So the idea that ratings don't matter, that's ludicrous. Of course they matter. Do they matter as much in 2021 as they say did in the Monday Night Wars in the late 90s? No, you can't live and die by the ratings anymore. But they do tell a, a you know, a part of this, a part, an image, a snapshot of what's going on, but they don't tell the whole story. They, they don't anymore because they don't take into account lots of other factors. They don't take into account on-demand viewing. They don't take into account DVRs. They don't take into account, they say they take into account social media, but I really don't think they do. They don't take into account social media trends. They don't take into account people watching, pre pretty much following the show on social media. When it comes to Impact Wrestling, they don't take into account Twitch viewership, which is significant for Impact Wrestling. Still not of the level of watching on Access TV, but they don't take into account uh, Twitch viewership. They don't take into account watching on Facebook or YouTube or people watching it illegally. All that kind of stuff, it doesn't tell the whole picture. And I think when it comes to Impact Wrestling, because they're on a, a network, because they're on a cable network like Access TV, which the irony being that it's called Access TV, but hardly anyone can access it, all of those other streams to view Impact Wrestling are very important, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on social media, whether it's on Twitch, whether it's wherever, all of those different avenues to watch Impact start to add up and actually paint the wider picture when it comes to Impact Wrestling viewership. So... I don't think you can live and breathe by the ratings, and I don't think that Impact Wrestling does, but 
it does tell a partial part of the story. It does tell a partial element of the story there. And I think if Impact Wrestling executives and officials are looking at this, they will be shocked this week. They will be shocked because there really is no discernible reason as far as I'm aware. I mean, I might be wrong. I mean, I'm based over here in the United Kingdom. I don't know if there was some big United States television event going on at the time. Um, as far as I'm aware, you know, I, I don't see why there would be such a significant drop of nearly, well, 30,000 viewers not tuning in this week. That, that, feels, that feels very significant. And we spoke yesterday about Impact Wrestling moving the Impact Rebellion pay-per-view from Saturday to Sunday for the first time in a long time. And the reason, I think, is because they don't want to compete with the UFC. It just goes to show. On a night where really they didn't have that much competition, I know that obviously there were some events in terms of newsworthy events you won't go into that were happening in the United States. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. People... Possibly were looking into news coverage at the time. That's a that's a possible explanation, I guess. But it just goes to show that if there is competition in terms of something else to watch uh, on television in that period of time, Impact Wrestling will not win because they're too small. So those people that say, well, they shouldn't have moved from Saturday because of the UFC, absolutely they should because it's been proven at this point. When Impact Wrestling has competition, it's not going to end well for them. And... I think that's a wider discussion because obviously NXT post-WrestleMania, even though it hasn't been announced, internally WWE calendars list NXT to be airing on Tuesdays going forward after WrestleMania. And if that is the case, I would think that Impact Wrestling will probably move from Tuesdays to Thursdays because they'll have to. Because if NXT, if NXT goes to Tuesday nights, which it is going to go to Tuesday nights, I don't say if, when NXT goes to Tuesday nights, it's not going to be good for Impact Wrestling because... Last time NXT went head to head with Impact Wrestling on Tuesday nights, the September 8th show drew 78,000 viewers for Impact Wrestling on Access TV. That was just because it went head to head to NXT. And now, you know, this year they've been hitting numbers like 186,000, 173,000, 170,000. You know, once NXT goes to Tuesday nights, that could that could half. Realistically, that could half. And Impact Wrestling doesn't want that. And they don't need that right now when they built up a bit of positive momentum. So I think... I, I, I think when it comes to Impact, I think this will be an eye-opener. As I mentioned, I don't know if there are plans to change the night of Impact on Access TV. I know they've aired on Tuesday nights for a while at this point, but I think with NXT on the horizon and a number like this, where there was limited competition on Tuesday night, I think it will make NXT, or make Impact Wrestling rather, think about what's going to happen in the future. And as I mentioned, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see what happens next week. I think this makes next week's and the, and the following week's... Um, Impact Wrestling on Access TV numbers incredibly interesting and uh, I think the ratings I think were interesting as well. I think it'll be interesting to see if the rating in the key 18 to 49 demographic holds even next week as well and it'll certainly be interesting to see if those 30,000 live viewers came back or not. But certainly as I mentioned will lead to some detractors saying look you can rant and rave and say and praise this AEW and Impact Wrestling working relationship, saying Impact Wrestling's benefiting and all this kind of stuff, but they've just done their lowest viewership of the year. What happened? This was meant to be a big show with a big big amount of success with Kenny Omega arriving. And certainly the Kenny Omega detractors, Lord knows there is a couple of them out there, they will say, look, you're saying that Kenny Omega's this big draw Well, he just did the lowest viewership for Impact Wrestling in 2021. And it, it, it's significant. It is significant, as I mentioned. It doesn't tell the whole story, but it certainly is significant. So we'll have to wait and see what happens going forward. But of course, as always, it's just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Impact Wrestling doing the lowest viewership of 2021 with the return of Kenny Omega this week on Access TV? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube, got the rankings and get to people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.